Hello, this is Data Trader Pro with your nightly market wrap, uh, Wednesday, February 17th. Um, yeah, so we'll get right into it. Uh, SP 500 has had a decent correction, I would say, by any measure off the high. We made a lower high, lower high, a slightly higher high, but that's actually a, a retrace high. And uh, down we went. We called the bottom very well on internals, took the move up. We called the top this arrow has been there for well since that day where we had the the doji and uh, we've had a one two three four five wave pullback uh, down to a very slightly lower low than the previous low so you know uh, candle wise uh, and pattern wise that can be all of the correction now we may not be out of the woods but we're ahead uh, of a couple of key moving averages certainly the uh, daily 20 uh, EMA uh, which is here um, uh, we're moving back towards the 50 that may be a target uh, but we've got a bump in the road in that we've basically touched and for now rejected off of the daily R3 pivot uh, resistance, uh, third resistance level uh, on the daily pivots. Uh, on SPX and SPY is exactly the same. So um, I expect our next move, uh, if we don't immediately gap up, which I think is unlikely now because we've burned off a lot of steam, is to pull back um, and uh, probably targeting the 1900 level somewhere in there. And by that time, probably this daily 20 will will be up about about there too. So we'll probably pull back to about the 1900 level before. Uh, well, we'll see. I, I don't want to speculate too much. Uh, the site's focusing on data, on uh, market internals and volatility, and using those to make better trading decisions and staying on the right side of the market. So uh, we've called every one of these turns so far, um, and it's looking like I'm going to say initially there's some signs that that's going to be a local top, not a not a a permanent top, but a local top. We should get another move down. Then maybe we retest a bit higher, going for something like the 50% the retrace of this entire move. Uh, we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, the, the bonds in the VIX space have been very interesting of late because both have rallied uh, significantly. This is just uh, on a 15 minute. Uh, this entire side uh, are various um, uh, places on the curve of bonds, TLTs, the 30, well, 20, 20 year, but it's 20 to 30 year. Uh, this is the, represents basically the 10 year treasury note, um, and the five year roughly, uh, the two year, and then the, the short uh, T bill, you know, 13 week T bill. Um, so these all made highs. Uh, we had a spike top a couple of days ago and they've been bleeding lower. We had a, a serious pullback on TLT and the 10 year especially. Uh, VIX topped uh, a couple of days before expiry as it often does and um, and pulled back significantly. XIV was a very nice entry for us uh, under 16 and we're still long, but I'm thinking that uh, we, we don't want to leave it on the table too long because I see some signs that maybe we're going to start to pull back soon. Um, we'll get right into the site, actually. Uh, very bullish on internals, uh, advanced declines. Uh, two days ago, actually, or uh, th sorry, yesterday, this was even higher on the NQ100. The NQ100 represents a lot of the high-flying Momo tech stocks. Uh, that were deeply oversold on this last run, and they've really been bought. So, uh, some of them in particular. Um, so, yeah. So, nice advanced decline, uh, very strongly bullish. Nasdaq combined a little less so. Nasdaq 100, the high flyers, very very bullish. SP 500 bullish. Uh, Russell uh, quite bullish, but it may be getting into a topping move too. Uh, as you can see, it's got a it's got a bullish. A trend, but um, the advanced decline is not as high as the others. The Dow uh, was also bought. So, um, trend today, our indicator called a bullish trend day at 10:15 uh, a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, that's when it puts out its call, measures key market internals before then, uh, makes a determination, and if that's what we got. We got about a 27-point SPX 
range day uh, off the open. We did nothing but tra trend up on the uh, DTP dollar weighted buying pressure, which is our own basket of key market moving stocks, um, the dollar weighted net volume of, of that basket. And uh, we use this chart to basically see whether, you know, it's like a money flow index. Money's flowing into the market, into key stocks that move the market where it's flowing out. And today it was just steadily flowing in. There really wasn't even anything resembling a pullback here. So um, we stayed long um, until late in the day and uh, started to get out of some of the positions. But still long XIV from, from uh, a couple of days ago. Um, the DTP MCC is the, our version of the uh, McClellan. It's an intraday version of the McClellan oscillator. It's a slightly different measurement. Uh, measures both NASDAQ and NICE. Uh, it's a little faster moving. Uh, it was, you know, basically within a, a short range. It was very bullish all day. So net issues uh, leaped up and stayed. Uh, near highs most of the day. This is what a trend day looks like on net volume. This is a combined net volume as well. Uh, you basically start at zero off open because you know net volume always starts at zero and then you you know you trend one way and you have no pullback. So that's a that's a trend day. So we we had a we had a classic uh, bullish trend day today um, and and we were up. We, there was a there was a move up off open, a gap up uh, overnight, and then it continued. It didn't never really pulled back more than a couple of points. Breadth was bullish across the board. Trends uh, actually closed for the most part bullish. Uh, Nasdaq um, was getting into the neutral range. Um, net volumes were very bullish uh, on uh, Nice, Nasdaq, and Russell. Um, the advanced decline delineators uh, peaked uh, earlier in the day, stayed bullish. They all remained bullish. Russell started coming off a little bit, and sometimes a little Russell can be the canary in the coal mine uh, and, and put out a, a slightly earlier warning. So, um, you know, coming off of a almost nine uh, to one positive reading and closing. At about three to one, well, it's with three to one still bullish, obviously, but you know it's it's nothing like nine to one. So uh, this bullishness uh, came off a little bit, and and you'll notice on the the delineators that they all closed near their lows, but their lows were still bullish, but they closed near their lows. So it's sometimes what happens when you when you get a, a very very strong move. Uh, and, and it doesn't last very long. It's a, a little bit like a Roman candle. It, it pops and then it uh, then you fizzle. You know, sometimes when you get such extreme oversold as we we had, uh, you know, if the last low on uh, E mini futures was eighteen oh two, you know, we've rallied uh, one hundred and twenty five points off that low um, in just a few days. <laughs> you know, that's a that's a lot of movement. That you know, what happens is things get stretched. And they need a retrace, and we may be seeing the the beginnings of something like that. The volatility picture um, has improved significantly. Improved in terms of you know uh, bearish for volatility, bullish for indexes. Um, we rolled uh, VIX futures contracts this morning. Uh, we were severely backwardated, uh, but that. Uh, contract expired and now we have a new relationship uh, between a new front month future uh, which is March and uh, and April and we're already into contango and we were basically right off uh, open today in in contango and we spent the whole day basically there uh, which means that it's uh, it provides things like XIV which is inverse volatility uh, a nice tailwind and a, and a headwind for VXX, it makes VXX trading um, uh, harder. It uh, we, because of the negative roll yield that it creates. Um, VVIX, which is a volatility volatility, uh, bled off nicely, confirming the uh, eight percent move roughly in all of the uh, VIX uh, indices. Why well, the important VIX indices to us? Uh, VXST, the nine-day version of the VIX. VIX, which is a 30-day implied volatility, and uh, VXV, which is a three-month uh, implied volatility. When these are all down, all in the red, and this is confirming, you, got, you have a pretty good 
down move in volatility. Now we're still at elevated levels. You know, 20 is really the demarcation line for VIX. It's its long-term mean, roughly. Uh, we're at we closed roughly at 20 on uh, VXST and higher on VIX. So you you see that VXST is starting to bleed off a little more than than these. So it, it, that indicates that this down move might be a little more short-lived because we we still get. A down move in volatility, that is, to be specific, might be a little short-lived um, and, and kind of adds a little fuel to that uh, pullback fire uh, for SPX because, you know, the the, the longer expiring, the, the three-month volatility is still elevated. It's a higher number than the short-term. Um, it's, it's a higher number still than the 30-day. So uh, fear has not come out of this market, uh, trepidation maybe. <laughs> Um, is still there. So uh, we're going to have to watch these, um, but I think this is kind of the setup for the beginnings of a pullback. But, you know, it may be a day or two early. We'll, we'll, we'll have to watch price action, uh, and we'll have to watch uh, um, the internals, of course, as always. So um, let's go to block trades and um, have a look at what's happening there. Um, basically, you can see that, you know, cluster of buying at the lows, uh, you know, tons of buying. Once we broke up above this level, um, you know, there was nothing but air above. So we, you know, a lot of added orders in here once we broke up above. A lot of added orders on SPY. And here, these may be continuation trades. Uh, not really sure. The, you know, there's nothing in the, you know, multi million dollar, sh or sorry, multi million share uh, trade uh, level up here yet is usually when you get a big 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 sell uh, a market moving sell you'll see sometimes I don't know if that's still on here yeah this guy that was a good ten and a half million shares that started the down move um, sometimes we like to wait for those but you don't always get them but you definitely should see it market turns uh, on spy uh, IWM, QQQ, you'll see some big uh, contracts. So these are big institutional players uh, creating orders uh, in dark pools that uh, sometimes come out after the bell um, in after hours. They get uh, shown up as late prints. Sometimes they're in real time. But you know the net effect on the market is that you know somebody sells 10 million shares of SPY. It's basically about 10% of what it trades in a day. <laughs> It's a it's a market moving order. So and other traders see that, and you know, especially other large traders, and uh, and and generally follow suit. You know, it's much better to follow the big money in this market than to try to swim against it. Um, you know, really, if you're a, a retail trader, uh, even if you've got a fairly big account for a retail, a retail trader, I can almost guarantee you that it's nothing. It's not going to move the market. Not like these guys do. So this is important stuff to watch. Um, QQQ, uh, we've got some decent sell orders up here, you know, in the half million range. We've got a continuation trade here, million. So, you know, you can see that, you know, th this area was bought and they started to accumulate, started to accumulate, it dipped a little bit and got back up. They accumulated the same level as these big trades, a million and a half shares over here. And you know, boom, we popped. So, you know, the reasons we pop are are not, you know, in a market on a down move are not because uh, anything other than the fact that large traders move the market. I mean, it's, you know, people like to say it's manipulated. You know, it may be, but really it's just, if you can see this stuff coming, you know, don't get in the way of it, you know. Once you're above these levels of these, you know, millions of shares up up here, you got a free ride. You know, just follow the big money. You know, it's much much easier way to trade, and much more successful way to trade. Now, IWM gets interesting here because IWM, IWM's had a big move off the low, and we've got some big uh, prints for IW, uh, IWM. This isn't a big necessarily. It's a fairly big print if it were on SPY, but it's quite a big print on IWM. 1.6 million shares. We'll go to the summary page to confirm these in a, in a minute. I'd like to look at volatility. Uh, ETPs, which are VXX and XIV. There's nothing really showing up on terms of a big buy, but here you go. Here, here's the classic block trade 
you know, signal. You know, you got a much bigger trade than normal at a pop high. You know, big people, they're in the know. They, they understand what's going on with the market. They understand the levels that they're working with. They, under, they understand when things are getting overdone. And then they make trades that move the market. And, you know, you'd be kind of um, a very stubborn pr trader person <laughs> to go against this stuff. Look at all these cells here. I mean, once, once price popped up, you see that there's a little spike here. Once price popped up, that may have been bullish, but it immediately reversed lower. And once we couldn't get back above these levels, you use these line of demarcation. You know, you can see that it, roughly 30, 30 bucks on VXX. If if you stayed under these big trades, I mean, it was a nice short, or you could just simply take the inverse long, which is XIV, which is what uh, what we did. So, um, very easy trade to take. Uh, great indication, very clear on the block trades. Uh, money in the bank. So, uh, metals, wow, I don't know, all over the, you know, a lot of block trades on the way up, a lot on the way down, um, you know, lots of accumulate. We saw these huge block trades down on GLD, which we reported on Twitter and our stock twits feed, down at 104. Obviously, we got a big pop uh, and nothing but continuation trades, like millions of shares added, millions added, but all this selling right that was easy to spot too so as long as price didn't stay above these levels you know this sort of 119 120 level um you know some more cells here and guess what happened price just dropped this isn't an accident folks look at these you know like people selling millions of shares here uh, you know people sell millions of shares of uh, an etf and you know that's there's a lot of liquidity taken out of the uh, the order book there so um you know that'll sweep that'll sweep an order book on just about anything so anyway um you know down down we went whether we're finding some support here uh it remains to be seen you know we'll we'll keep an eye out um big uh block trade uh, huge actually but it, it, you see what happens on gdx is um at, you know, you notice these huge trades on GDX exactly 4 p.m. These are market on close orders. And we think that a lot of it is related to rebalancing of the GDX related ETFs. So, uh, again, it's hard to get too excited about these things when you see these sort of rebalancing, these huge rebalancing trades uh, happen. But still, the levels are important because, you know, a lot of shares. Uh, changed hands here. So seven, 1782 is your demarcation. If price can get back above there, we'll have another run up. So I'm not sure the metals are done this run up yet, but I have a feeling that they they, they are owed a, a fairly deep retrace because of how quickly uh, they went up. But we there was a long basing period too. Metals based for a few months where they didn't really move a lot and frustrated a lot of traders. Uh, same pattern on uh, SLV on silver. Um, a lot of sells at the highs. Uh, pretty big prints. And now it doesn't get the same volume of prints as say gold uh, GLD, which has many many millions of shares up here. So I'll add it up. Uh, you know, I always like to point out it's very easy to check on the summary page. Each one of these opens or closes. You can you can scroll down a ticker and see exactly. The last five days of block trades, um, exactly where the levels were, you know, and you look for clusters of, uh, you know, look on GLD, and we'll we'll find inevitably find you know a cluster of large numbers. Uh, well, certainly back a few days where there was cells, the one eighteens, you know, this one eighteen level had quite a lot of stuff happening at it. Um, you know, so you see how quickly things. You know, we were in the 110s, 109s, 108s, 106s. This is only like five trading days, right? So, you know, we, we've we've come a long way. So, you know, 106s to you know in the what 120s at the at the heights, you know, into into the 120s. So you saw some big prints up here all around the same time, right? There's a million right there you know and, and more so anyway use the lines as lines of demarcation 
Uh, very important. Oh yeah, let's check out one last area, which is energy, before we wrap up uh, for the day. So, um, USO oil, uh, big buys, big buys, lots and lots and lots of small and mid-sized trades to act as support here. We popped. Um, we had a spike low in futures around here. Um, you know, this is an area that at the time may have looked like selling. We did pop, uh, go, uh, we, sorry, we dropped. Uh, we popped, we dropped down below, but we very quickly added some orders at roughly the same price in the mid, you know, 830s. Uh, and then basically I would use, you know, oil above the 830s. Uh, USO uh, is bullish and we're well above that now so uh, stay bullish uh, until you uh, see that price level broken uh, UNG has been a right mess hasn't it uh, 600,000 traded at 706 uh, we're above that we'll use that as a uh, base of support for now if we break below that we'll assume bearish you know we're getting to the tail end of winter um, it's not been a terribly cold winter in the Northeast where most uh, natural gas is used. Uh, I, you know, it's already extremely low, but low is, you know, there's always a new low that can be made. So, you know, we're kind of getting into what they call shoulder season. So um, we may have a last run out. We're about to roll these contracts soon too. I believe uh, CL, the futures, oil futures roll uh, in the next day or so. Uh, UNG will, will roll uh, in the next few days uh, or week. Uh, often, what you do is you get a you get a run up into uh, rollover, and then it'll the pattern will continue in its original direction, which has been down. So, we'll see. I, I, this may be support for that pop, and then we get a continued move lower. We'll have to see. Um, overall, just to summarize, uh, you know, we've we've been very bullish uh, in in just a few days and had a very extended run up in just a few days off a large sell off uh, that's to be expected bear market rallies are some of the strongest rallies and they fool a lot of people into thinking that we're starting a new bull market we may be we may have bottomed we may have double bottomed in the low 1800s um, but I think there has to be some uh, gaps to fill and some retest levels to be had first and we're seeing just the very earliest inclinations of um, the start of maybe a pullback I'll go right back to the uh, the SPX chart yeah and 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 see that again to remind you we're into a, a, a serious resistance zone here uh, we may go as high as the prior high a little north of 1940 before pulling back. We may even make a higher high up to the 50-day before pulling back. But a pull a, a pullback is brewing, and I, I think it's going to target somewhere around this 1900 level. Anyway, that's it. February 17th uh, market wrap. Uh, thanks for joining us, and that's it for tonight. See you soon. Thanks.